Mr. Marshall. Well, Senator Chairman uh, Booker, thank you so much. But before I start, I just want to take a quick drink of the most wholesome, healthiest, nutritional drink ever known to mankind. Here's to the farmers and the dairy folks. So I am, I am excited to be here to talk about food as medicine. This has been uh, a priority for my entire professional life. I think it'd be good to take a moment to pause what's working out there when it comes to food as medicine. I think the WIC programs are outstanding. Food banks are doing a great job. And more and more, there's, there's opportunities for healthy choices at food banks. Uh, Meals on Wheels do an incredible job. Our senior citizen, senior citizen centers, where they get lunches, uh, not only getting nutrition, but they're getting some psychosocial help there as well. Something else I've seen out there that's worked in the, in the real world are the double bucks, rewarding healthy choices. So as we write a farm bill, I think you know, it's, it's part of my job as a center to figure out what's working and how can we accentuate them. As we think about nutrition, I can't help but think about Medicare and Medicaid, that Medicare is facing a cliff, really insolvency in 2028. Medicaid funding is always a challenge up here. What would be the impact of good nutrition on Medicare and Medicaid? I want to submit for the record an article from JAMA. It's April 22nd, 2019. It's entitled, the association between receipt of a medically tailored meal program and health care use. An article that I read several years ago, um, and it demonstrates that the readmission rate for Medicare patients sent home with 10 tailored meals per week, that readmission rate was 20% of the uh, control group. And if you think about it, the average cost for a Medicare admission is $13,000. So if there was 80,000 left of those, 80% less of those, how could that be used to fund good nutrition? You know, maybe, maybe make it an investment of four or $500 to save taxpayers $13,000, and not to mention it's the right thing to do. So I think that's a, a great uh, concept, and Chairwoman, Chairman of the All-Powerful Ag Committee, as Senator Roberts taught me, and I are, are introducing legislation that would be a Medicare pilot project to do just that, to take a bigger group of patients, sending them home from the hospital with uh, medically tailored meals. So I think that that's a great bipartisan opportunity. Uh, next, Senator Booker and I, I think, are working on a project maybe that would attack um, more of the Medicaid population. And specifically, I think there's the lowest hanging fruit are pre-diabetic folks. Um, what, what could we send them home with? What should they be getting as far as a nutrition diet as well? So we look forward to, to continuing that discussion, maybe based on BMI. Let's not even do a blood test. Let's let them enter the program very easily, use BMI perhaps, and maybe follow up with hemoglobin A1Cs as well. So we're looking forward to that. And then Senator Jill Brand and I are working on getting milk back into the, into the lunch program, specifically whole milk. We're going to have a generation of women that have osteoporosis and osteopenia in their 40s rather than their 50s because they're not drinking milk uh, at school. So we want to bring that back into the program as well. Um, this whole concept here reminds me about dynamic scoring and we, how the CBO doesn't use dynamic scoring and how do we overcome that as well. I'm preaching to the choir here, of course. Um, one of my concerns is that the FNS recently provided recommendations for WIC that included additional non-dairy substitutes for moms and children in the WIC program. Again, the WIC program near and dear to me, something that my patients used every day. Um, and I think this is contrary to the recommendations of increased consumption of dairy products in the dietary guidelines for Americans. Um, and then I'm concerned about meatless Mondays and the impact of less protein in people's diets as well. So I think my question is for, for Dr. Volpe. Do you believe meat and dairy are important sources of nutrients uh, like protein and calcium for children and pregnant women? It, it's a complicated question to answer. Um, there's a, a, a lot of what you said I really agree with. Um, the study you cite, I, I believe, was a Berkowitz et al. study that really showed um, very impressive results in terms of medically tailored meals for chronically ill post-hospitalization patients. And I think those kinds of initiatives for the acute 
uh, patients acute, post-acute care who are frail are really important. We also really need to think about programs for patients for primary prevention. So the patient with diabetes, the patient with diabetes uh, who's not frail, but who would benefit from easier access to healthy food, subsidized access to healthy food. I think the, the questions about meat are complicated because there's some meats that are healthier than others. Saturated fat is obviously a problem for people with heart disease. Uh, and same thing with dairy. There's, you know, I think there, there are healthier alternatives in some cases, um, but it is very important people have enough protein in their diet. And so we need to figure out holistically how do you accomplish that given the full range of, of food options. Yeah, I appreciate that. I just hope we don't forget, though, that we need to be able to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins somehow as well. I think for pregnant women especially, it's very important. Those vitamins A, D, E, and K are, are very important as, as well. So there are some good fats uh, as well. Um, I think I've passed my time. The last comment I would make is we, we almost need coaches as much as we need nutritionists and experts. I think most of us know what a healthy diet looks like, and we can make that more accessible, but somehow we have to get this coaching part of it as well and changing lifestyles, changing healthy lifestyles, and that's where it tends to break down. Dealing with pregnant women is probably the only time I saw huge lifestyle changes, and that's because they had a secondary motivation. Um, and the WIC programs, all those folks so involved. So how do we take that concept and expand it? Uh, it's been a question I've tried to answer for over 30 years, and maybe we'll make some progress. Thank uh, you. I yield back. You had a paper you wanted to be put into the record without objection. That's put in the record. Number two is we are, uh, you all know, it's Senator Dr. Marshall, and he carries a lot of weight, I think, uh, not on this committee, only on this committee, but also in the entire United States Senate, and your passion for medically tailored meals and your partnerships on both sides of the aisle. I just want to just recognize how grateful I am to work with you on some of these key issues. Uh, we're going to go into a second round because uh, Senator Braun and I are in charge. And uh, uh, so we are, 